All right, we're in. I, I think both of us want to go second here. Ugh. But to be fair, we got made to go first last time. It worked pretty well. This could also be a, a donk game as well. <laughs> Quite easily. It'd be very funny if they start Lone Squawk ability. We stone lot of Lone uh, Flutter Moon. Look at Iron Bundle. Ask me if it's powered on coal. <laughs> yes. Okay. Let's see how this goes. So we can't do our lone start. We have a dark energy. We can probably find energy relatively quickly. I th think we start with the Coridon. I think we're safe to start with the Coridon. The Squawk Billy start! No! <laughs> oh no! All our dreams would have come true! That's so funny! Oh man! All right, well, that's so funny. I'm not playing Pokestop down because they'll want that. I know they want it. Uh, enter. I wish we got the 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 start. They got two energy switch, four switch cards, four dark patch, nine darkness energy. Oh, they had Nest Ball anyway, so it wouldn't have been that impactful, but it would have been funny. Forcing them into the retreat so it uses their manual attach. But yeah, having that Squawk ability immediately in the active is very good for us. The real issue we have right now is having to play down the one Greninja for a bit of search. Because we can't one-shot it with the Coridon. Do they run Collapsed? No, so they can't get rid of that Squawk ability at all. For reference, what's the start? The start? What do you mean, what's the start? The Sardagon's pretty big. They will not want to squawk a bit of the Prime Catcher in play. But, they might Prime Catcher to put the Greninja into the active, just to slow us down a little bit. He said they had a bad start, I thought. Oh, right, so the funny, like, bad start for them is if they had Lone Squawk ability and nothing else, if we'd have had um, Fluttermane in the active, they wouldn't have been able to use Squawk and Seize until they retreated. And if we forced them into a retreat, it means they would have to manually attach, um, and then they'd lose the manual attach on the Roaring Moon. That's, like, huge wishful thinking. They're actually going to use... Okay, yeah. That... What did I say, chat? Not. Now I know it's not the mirror. Okay. Ah, uh, that'd be nice. Smart. Yeah, something. We can actually do with like milling an energy off the poke stop next. For the side to get us full value. We're kinda stuck where we are. But the fact they've given us two two prizes is huge. Like, we will absolutely punish that. Hopefully. Man, they really just had everything. That's kind of crazy. <laughs> so we can't put Pokestop back into play here. They might have had, like, a good enough turn here to just, like, not worry. Which is quite frustrating. <sighs> Honestly, they're probably going to have the resources anyway. Let's just go for it. Just the Awakening Drum here sucks. I think we have to Sardo. <laughs> Fuck off. Um, how much damage are we doing? 90. We truly clear every gamer here. Okay, Urban Vessel Away, Coridon. Grab ourselves too dark.
Then we Ultra Ball away. A Dark Energy and a Sada. No, we can get it back later. Get a second Roaring Moon ready. Because we want to make sure we can just go straight into that then. Attach and go. Attach that there. Would I Awakening Drum for three here? Is it worth doing? It's more damage. I would argue that was relatively worth it. Let's do 130. We can get to 150. Okay, so we're two hitting into the Roaring Moon. That's fine. Now we're to four prizes. We'll be on four prizes. We can get Squawk ability for two more. They take one off us, then so be it. I don't feel too bad about the situation. They give us more two prizes. It's incredible. As soon as we can do just a base 230, they're screwed. The problem is we really need to get another Roaring Moon going. I mean, we need to make sure there's always a backup. Don't be afraid. Frenzy gouging. <laughs> the Pokestop was probably a misplay because they don't have to use theirs. But I don't think I'd put another one back in anyway. So what did we do? 150, so we'll do 170 next turn. I'm actually tempted to put the Coridon up, actually. Because Coridon will take the knockout, and I'm hoping it will force them to knock the Coridon out. Because even if they go for the Roaring Moon, it adds more damage. If we have to two-hit until the end of the game, and then counter catcher on one prize, then so be it. It's actually probably absolutely fine. <clears throat> it's not the best way to do it, but... It's fine, we can let them stay a prize card ahead. Knowing we've got counter catcher later. We've got the manual attached, I don't know why I'm thinking. The Roar Moon, perfect. Touch the fighting here. I had a panic attack then. I was like, do I have the knockout? <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Mild amount of panic then. So we're doing three, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven, one ninety. The four more knockouts and we're good. If we hit Sada, we've got him. Oh, it's quite a low chance to hit Sada, actually. Uh, punished. <laughs> oh, hang on. No, we're not. How much damage are we doing here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 2, 10. I'm doing 200. We're only doing 200. Loki was only just to mill three things there. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> um, we should have another Roaring Moon available to us. They tried to stall me. The one energy switch will do nothing for them here. We got one energy attached. Six in the discard. This could be. This should be a knockout here, but we can just use Karidon again for a knockout. I can ride on just low key cleaning these knockouts up. That's really funny, actually. 
We haven't seen Palpod yet, have we? No. <laughs> Promo Roaring Moons? They are nice Roaring Moons, to be fair. I quite like them. There's a Switch cart coming. Yep. This takes us to 210. Really do have seen the pal pad, I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> we can take if we see countercatcher, we can take a knockout Coridon still. And then we had just have enough ready for a knockout. We've got like two turns to find everything we need. <clears throat> With the deck as small as it is, we should be okay. Do we gamble on the Poke Gear here? Foolish. Fine. So, we'll Super Rod. And we'll take back an Energy and a Roaring Moon. And we know we're going to take... We, we know a Knockout is coming, so we might as well. Grab you. And let's just make sure we've got a Sard... So, Sard... The last Sard was prized. So, we are looking for the Pal Pad. <coughs> Which sucks. But it is what it is. Kind of catcher goes hard here, as does Palpad. Just take the knockout here? Yeah, we do. See if they got an answer. They've used two dark, two dark patches, haven't they? There's a last solder as well. Perfect. Three dark patches used. One boss. One switch. Three shoes. Two solder. The prime catcher's gone. I think we have enough damage for a knockout now. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, ten, thirteen, fourteen. We're two off, which we can get quite easily. When the Corallon goes down, we've got it. Uh, Iona's crashing the game. Uh... Right, row. Okay. <laughs> Incredible. The exact cards we needed. I'm pretty sure that gives us the knockout. Yep, perfect. Easy clap. So I said good luck, no answer. I gave him a GG, no answer. Fantastic. Love people like that. Oh, that felt good. That felt really good. I would say that version of Roaring Moon has a significantly worse matchup into Angel Box than the than Sparse build. 